welcome to an immortal gates of pyro game today we have scruffy in the north playing as a blue zol and his opponent will be itladder playing orzum in the red so both of them playing their immortals in opposite factions uh zol a bit more aggressive has some really nice spells you can summon zol to do some damage and see like zol like our zol player is going for a very quick expansion i guess i itladder orzum more of a defensive immortal uh, in the general sense of his overworld ability his is a uh, pyre abilities but of course you can use them offensively as well good poking abilities and we'll see how both the players decide to go with uh, both going for a very early expand scruffy going for an ether right after so getting ready for his tech buildings for his tech choices same for lander so completely standard so far we'll have to check if they're going yeah the greediest of greedy openings going for tech and economy from the get-go and slowing down a bit your production of units Nightlander won't slow down quite as much, going for his Legion Hall right about um, 217. is going to put it on the low ground, um, which helps with reinforcements, but of course it exposes the building a bit more. But helping with reinforcements like this is pretty nice. And units come out just a little bit quicker. And of course we do have the Teapots, the eternal scouts of the game that are checking out everything, making sure the opponent is not doing anything too crazy. And after seeing the expand first and the double Aether, both players know that they are safe to do whatever they want, whatever they plan to do. And we'll see how they diverge from there. He's so far scruffy, going for only an altar of the Warby. We'll see where he goes, where he wants to go from here. It might just be a lot of bone stalkers, a little spearmen that, that love going around the map. On the opposite side, Orzum uh, might decide to go for a very quick soul foundry to get that tech up. Both of them might go for a very, very early tech. Hard to see so far. And ooh, a very quick Aether. And it Itlander not quite as fast on his Aether. So Scruffy going for very tech where he root very, very quickly. Itlander sees it with his Teapot. Sees that his opponent went for it and finishes just the right timing. I love seeing that from our players. Players getting the expertise know exactly when this finishes. Ex at the same time, it's got hurt, so it starts mining immediately. Of course, in this game, the second tech structure, structure mines on its own. You do not need to put workers on it or anything. As long as it stays alive and the base is nearby, you'll be good to go. And under on his side going for the pyro camps he wants that early pyro lead right now he has a small lead killing a few towers i suppose don't know which ones and yeah two of them are enough to take this out we'll see if scruffy heads out no scruffy wants to contest this hitlander is already fighting all these modes and all these ancients and he'll be in trouble now he can't really fight against these bone stalkers there's too many of them four actually four of them is pretty good but there is the advantage right now scruffy has the advantage of having the tower right nearby so he can go heal if he wants the Bone Stalker barely survives, and Itlander with all this fight ends up with the Pyre. Scruffy needs to head back. He can't afford to fight this. Every single shot he takes, he can do some damage, but he doesn't want to take more shots and loses one Bone Stalker, but kills the Zentari. Very useful. And he traps the other one. The second one will go down. The third one is pretty close to trap, and yeah, he gets it. Itlander with a very nice early lead. Itlander lo losing two Zentari. He d was able to get uh, the Pyre Camp at the very least. Losing those two Zentari is very expensive. Uh, you can send them back home to the tower here to heal up or uh, keep it on the field and then behind this he's making dervish so quick uh anti-light units as the bone stalkers are so he sees them he wants to deal with them with the with resins on your side uh, there is the god heart so he evolved the growth heart into a god heart you can see the little posting heart on the main one not a uh, not not the natural one there he can go for different tech and he went for, ooh, double armor room. So the second tier unit, the advanced ground units, be their I-Cores or Resonance. Oh, Resonant. Okay, this is coming to a big Resonant push after the Bone Stalkers. He'll go for Resonance along with the Neurosite, which allows him to get the upgrades, where it allows him to get deploy mechanics for those Resonance. Once they're deployed, the, the zone control is so powerful on them. It'll be very hard for Lander to try and pierce through. But this time, he has a small tummy for Resonance pierce come out, but not enough to do a lot of damage. Let's see what he can accomplish, though. Those dervish are quick and powerful, and if they're able to get on top of those of the alloy line, he'll be in a great position. And here they come. Inlander moving for the dervish, hitting like crazy, but here come the residents, and he calls for Zol. Zol coming in to defend, and the first resident that came out of the wrong spot is defeated by Scruffy. Zol, uh, Inlander doing his best to survive here, to do as much of as he can, but the Zol is ever powerful. He's focused firing it down. It's not really worth it. The unit will disappear after a bit. It just costs some power to summon, and great defense, defense from Scruffy here. Loses one of his uh, resonants. On the other side, Scruffy, well, Itlander loses most of his army. We look at the differential here on the army value. 
1200 army value to 600. Scruffy comes out slightly ahead and goes for his third base behind us. Hitlander on his side, mm, yeah, taking his third base as well in the same position in the center. From this, Scruffy feels confident that he can just go for the pyro camp. He doesn't need to worry about his opponent. This pyro camp's already been taken. And yeah, Scruffy needs to get his power back. He used a lot of it to summon Zolt, survive that push. Losing one resident is pretty painful. They're expensive units, but he has the manpower to get quite a few more. Economy is coming along. Another will try, will need to find a way to go against those residents. Those are very powerful in those early pushes. And yeah, Angelarum is often an answer. You want you can get some air units as reds do not shoot up. Bone stalkers are in decent defense. Uh, but if you can get the units in the right place, you can really do a lot of damage. And Lander and Scruffy going for the back rocks of our red player. Sentinel sees everything. Of course, Sentinel is great if it's only an anti-air unit. It can be very useful against be very useful the Frums, the the very very quick air harriers that can just jump from position to position without dealing too much damage. And Lander trying to reposition back and forth, but ooh, he got juked by Scruffy who breaks the rocks, gets in position, and sieges up all his all his residents. Calls Zol as well, he wants to win this fight. The pillar comes down on top of him though, and Itlander does not want to lose his third base. But it's gonna be close. All the units are here, but Zol at the back dealing some heavy, heavy damage. There's a few bone stalkers at the back as well. And oh yeah, this is a nice defense from Itlander. Both of them use their ultimate to defend to attack this, but in the end, Itlander barely survives this push. Uh but will he keep his scepter alive? Okay, Zol dies at the last moment. And Scepter stays alive. Expensive air unit. And great push by Scruffy, but Lander barely defends it just as he wanted. And now we'll have to wait. What Scruffy plans on doing next. He's getting his two resonants. His base is up and running. Will be. He's getting his next expansion. Ah, what to next? Angelarium is up. Yeah, just rebuilding their forces. They both spent a lot of army on this attack. We can see their supply and their army value is pretty close at this point. Neither of them that far ahead that he can't overcome the other one. Getting that pyre, that also essential pyre is very good. Uh, but Atlanta knows better, has to run away and leave Scruffy with that pyre. Uh, the Absolvers are out and attacking the Absolvers. Oh man, those residents they jumped before to get the first few shots of Absolver. Get the first resident, that's a decent deal as well with those Centauri. Get the second resident, great fight from Hitlander. Finding that hallowed ground gives those gives those Centauri a bit of a ranged attack uh, inside those grounds. But even though, Scruffy needs to run now. His, uh, he needs to keep that resident alive as much as possible. But that Scepter is coming forward, the Arox see it. Arox might want to get it and who barely survives there and yeah, going on top of the hill is always dangerous never want to attack where you do not see what's happening and healing up at the tower is the scepter and what is going on behind the scenes he's going for his fourth base uh scruffy still dealing with his third base with his uh, natural getting more resonant as you can never have enough of those yeah it, it is doing a great job at limiting the number of those also powerful resonance Arox are in it's, it's to help deal with those uh, air, air units. Our Deceptor was a, is going to be able to heal up all the way at this tower. Scruffy looking for other angles of attack. He attacked the north. He sees this base going up. Where you go to next? Hitlander may need to reposition. Instead, uh, Scruffy just content getting that little bit of power at this power camp to cast those overall ability. So far, we've seen him use it to summon Zol a few times to help win some, some very powerful fights as Zol. Of course, is limited in time, can only appear for a few uh, for a few moments before she disappears to come back next time you use the pyre ability. Arzum's side, he cast the pillar earlier, and the pillar on top of uh, causing some damage on the units that it falls onto also gives a 30% damage boost. So any units that jump into it will get a lot more damage going for them. Now the teapot blocking the expansion a bit. Perhaps not that much. Scruffy wants his fourth eventually. Scepter is doing a great a great job over here, but all oh, those absolvers are all alone. Hellander sees it and wants to take care of them. Doesn't want to. Uh, could have committed onto them if you want. Oh, ancient construct rising in 30 seconds. This is a big, uh, big ancient creature that spawns in the middle at 10, 15, and 20 minutes. And every five minutes after that. And whenever it's on, it'll give a hundred power to each player. So you really want to kill it in the tug of war fashion. Uh, but those resonants are stuck in the middle. One goes down, second one goes down. Uh, the bone stalkers are coming back in. They don't want to leave those resonants all alone like that. 
can get jumped really strong. The Dervish jumping forward. Ancient has risen. Got to be careful if you fight near it. Both players will always try to get take it down. Resonance, a lot of power. And the Absolver's, the Absolver's minigun attack is just so powerful. Most stalkers need to stick, stay away. Uh, Resonance moving slowly but surely forward. Need to take that, want to take that position, but are afraid to do so for good reason. Dervish attacking the rock continuously. Will jump into here right after. Oh, battle going on. Resonance pushing forward. And the Halwars are out. Halwars are great units. They attack from afar. And they can actually deal with Resonance decently well as, as they have a larger range in them. And once Scruffy sees them, he might decide to move out then. You do not want to face those uh, Halwars unless you want to jump on top of them. And yeah. Use those resonants being pushed back. Neither of them have attacked the resonant. It's not quite time yet. Lone Stalker is getting annihilated from the pillars of light that come down from those towers. And oh, okay, putting down the tower foundation wants to defend his zone. A lot of what Orzum does, putting down some tower foundations to put on a citadel, so it allows him an extra healing spot here. On top of this one, so really a hard zone to attack into from Hitlander, which would also allow him to take this base. And this space pretty undefended with uh, those towers there. Of course, Surfy, if you want, can try to find another way to attack. Go into the back door here. Uh, a few options for him. Of course, it's always dangerous, those Halvors coming back and forth. Scepters are out of the game at this point. Have been defeated by Scruffy. I'm unsure if Hitlander is looking to make some more from here. Uh, going for the thrones. With the bearer of the crowns coming down, this building unlocks the thrones. And Scruffy checking if, if his opponent expand around there. Both of them are pretty close on the expansion count. Straining those rocks or these rocks will allow an easier access to this. Then it comes down to where does Scruffy want to expand next. Often taking the north phase of the map will be pretty fun. But yeah, this map has been pretty well split. Gotta be careful. Behemoth's coming in. will help deal with these units. And oh, the attack is coming. Scruffy wants this attack. Hitlander from afar is also dealing with it, and neither of them want to let the other one get the 100 power. So a fight will occur here, both of them attacking and want to take some damage from each other. Resident attacking the Absolver, Absolver dishing some damage, Zentari coming in. While the Ancient at the back tries to deal as much damage as it can, killing a few of the units, but more stalkers are attacking the Ancient and not his opponents. But there's not that many units left here. The Hallowers are attacking in, and the Hallowers are getting taken out, and this is a huge win for Scruffy. As those were all very expensive units, and not much will be left, and on top of that, behind this, there will be the Ancient that Scruffy will turn out with. He'll get the 100 power victory from this. So though a bit far behind Zentari. Don't, still don't want to let his opponent take care of that. Uh, but it's dangerous to let it go. Here comes the uh, the Dread Sister ability. Making, bleeding up all these units. Red Sears. In the balance. And the Icors come out of it. Uh, the little Quiddles come out of the front. And Ancient kill by Ice. 230 power. That 100 power makes a huge difference for any type of engagement going forward. This could be a sorry, game ending, but these type of fish are very powerful. The reinforcements for Scruffy are coming, so it, so Scruffy needs to be careful not to overcommit. Doesn't have that many tech units left. The behemoths are powerful, but need to push back a little bit. Letter still pushing. Oh, look at that blood plague! All the units, all the absolvers down to only their shields. Yeah, blood plague is very powerful. Only shields left. He can probably jump on these and try to take them out, especially with bone stalkers. Great hunt comes in. All units, all units of Scruffy, the ultimate ability, comes in, all the units have extra damage and speed boost, can go all around the map. Zoe is also summoned, but that's so many units. Scruffy going for the kill right now, at least take out the production and supply structure at the back. Hitliner looking where to attack next, how does he want to defend this? The attack is coming quick and quick and dirty, and it seems like the Great Hunt is over, and this is time Hitliner can try and move in here, but it might be too little too late. Scruffy all, more than tripling him in army value. And this is looking at the beginning of the end as Scruffy moves forward, kills the production structure, and that will be the end for Hitlander.